from all sinful activities and his life would be successful. This uh, lady, it was the ex-prostitute, you know, the Haridas Thakur. Another picture, Haridas Thakur is here, waving goodbye and going. Mm. So, she was sinful, but she started chanting and she gave up. So, I mean, this is a small philosophical point, I'm sure you're all uh, familiar with it. See, one of the nine, uh, no, ten offenses of the Holy Name is to huh? yeah, but I was thinking of another one. Uh, the what's called uh, huh? no, no. You see, that's not the offense. The offense is to tell the glories of the holy name of the faithless. What's the English formula generally? To to instruct a faithless person about the glories of the Holy Name. Okay, so there is a big difference. The offense is not to engage them in the Holy Name or to give them the Holy Name. The offense is to tell them too much. They cannot digest and they take something as mythological. It's telling the glories if they are not able to grasp them. That's offense. But you can always engage anyone to chant the Hare Krishna. That's not the offense. That's a very important point. Maybe you, you don't tell the whole glories, you just tell is that the holy name of God and you need to chant, it's purifying and you know, like basic let's say things which are what do you call it? Plausible even for a, a normal mind. The fact that the holy name is God himself, he has all the shaktis and, and you may not say the first day. But you can say, these are the holy names of the Lord, this is the process of purification, please chant Hare Krishna. Even if it's sinful. Okay? So then by practicing, they become less sinful and then they give up the sin altogether. What is your experience with or your thoughts about the Shiksha program? Okay, some of you um, did the Shiksha program. Any experience you like to share? Since uh, here many have um, they heard, or, but they're not doing it. Would you recommend it? What's your experience? Who wants to speak? Hi, we did this uh, Shiksha program in Juhu and we had a nice good experience about it. So many devotees actually. Bhakti Vriksha, within the Bhakti Vriksha we had a Shiksha program. So many devotees actually they were happy to receive the certificates and all. Oh, you have certificates for that? Yeah, we have certificates for every level and all. Uh, so yeah, that's, a, a, that, that's a, an interesting thing. There are, you can give certificates. Yes. I have a collection of certificates from different parts of the world in Mayapur. I'll show you if you like. From Russia, Argentina, Japan. Yes. We have a, a big program, Mahabhiti Yodhana, every month in which we used to give this uh, certificate. So you find it but, useful? Yes. Since how many years are you using it? Mm. Around one and a half to two years. Okay. Why you, what makes you feel that it's useful? Because it, it is a systematic step-by-step -step program and people uh, they are very comfortable uh, knowing that there is a structure and there is something to move forward to also. Okay. Plus there is competition when other certificates are given. Mm. There is a commitment, Prabhuji says, that there is a commitment that they have to chant so many rounds and they have to come up to the level of either now me teaching or something. So basically the Bhaktivikshya manage the program and then the temple gives the certificate according to the recommendation of the Bhaktivikshas. Yes. Okay. That's one way, you know, the two things can really work in symbiosis, you know. They obviously they feel more it's more solemn if they take it in the temple obviously. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, I'm I'm asking informally, how many of you are considering considering that maybe you want to use it? You're thinking that maybe you want to use it. Okay. There is more information, there is ISCON law, the details and, and again we are at your service if you want more information ask. But this is one of the tools. And you have noticed a certain, 
you might notice a certain uh, graduality, sequentiality in the uh, tools yeah, from Damoda program, offering a lamp, really like low, in low intensity, low commitment to the Shadakutir, obviously more commitment than Sadhana chart, which is again makes it more clear, more, 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 uh, more solid. And then, um, what was the fourth one? Each one, each one. Teach one. Well, no, it's an ongoing process of reading and mentorship, and then Shiksha program, which leads to initiation. And uh, about initiation, of course you know about initiation, but the Shiksha program leads up to initiation. This was a, a picture, actually I took it from a from a newspaper, from a newspaper, uh, a, a internet version of newspaper. This is Gopal Krishna Maharaj in Chandigarh. Was he giving, uh, I don't remember, 67 or 76 initiations. So he went into the newspaper and I took it. Do you know there is called law in regarding to initiation in detail? How many of you can uh, say, yes, I know it's called law and initiation very clearly? Raise your hand if you know. One, one of you, at least one representative of the <laughs> Western India. Not, well, of course, some are maybe a little detail that you don't know. But you generally, you know. Okay. Uh, then, uh, are those laws following your place? Or at least the laws you know about? <laughs> I don't see many hands. Are those initiation laws followed? Yes. yes. More than that. What does it mean? <laughs> How can you follow more? <laughs> what do you mean? Either you follow or you don't follow. <laughs> sometimes, but, but sometimes following more means not following. You know that? You know that? Sometimes. Can I give you an example from Miss Conlo? Can I? Okay. No, otherwise, I don't. Okay. I have a file here which I actually I put it together for the Siliguri devotees because they also, I mean, even some, some of them, more of them actually they didn't know really when I asked, do you know an initiation? Well, well, we know that there is an initiation, but uh, what is that? Sorry, I have to, where is the phone? Where is the phone? Oh, okay, excerpts from ISKCON Law Book. This is the old section, Discipleship in ISKCON, la la la. Now, I give you an example of one law. This is, okay, this is the, about the Shiksha ceremony. This is the old law about Shiksha ceremony, okay? Um, regulation. Initiations are, con can you see it? Sorry, I, I had to change the font. Regulations. Initiations of congregation of devo devotees. A law for 15.4.1. Congregational members shall be subject to the same standards for initiation as said in ISKCON law on initiation and for acceptance of Guru. ISKCON law states that the local temple or regional authorities must recommend the congregational candidate. However, this shall be done in the same manner any other qualified devotee. If a local authority considers a candidate for initiation not qualified, then the candidate should be informed what needs to be done in order to become qualified according to ISKCON law. Okay, this is important because I've seen, personally I've seen, sometimes, okay, there's a congregation of devotees, means home-based devotee. Uh, he or she seems to fulfill everything, huh? 16 rounds, 4 regularly, but the local authority, it could be the president, it could be somebody else, they just say, well, but we're not really sure, we don't know, uh, wait, you know? 
And sometimes people become very frustrated. And I would say rightly so. Because you are already fulfilling the, the, the ISCON law standard. And uh, they just say, well, we are not sure. And this we are not sure can go on for seven lifetimes. You follow? It can come life after life in your congregation, take birth life after life, he has to take birth because that's an initiation. <laughs> so, you know, every time he comes, you say, I'm not sure. But it's seven lifetimes. Yeah, but we are not sure. Maybe 18 lifetimes is better. I'm not, I mean, I'm joking, but it's serious. So the Iskon law say, if you're not sh sure, at least, at least tell them what you want. I remember once, a one spiritual master, was a spiritual master, the aspiring disciple, and the temple president. And the temple president said, again, it wasn't saying anything. It is not that there was a girl wanted initiation. And it's not that the temple president said, no, she did something bad or something. You know, it's not like we don't give because of this reason, A, B, C. No, she was just, well, you know, we don't know. I'm really not sure. So the guru said, okay, tell her what she should do to get this recommendation. And then finally, after half an hour discussion, TP said, okay, she should come at least three times a, a week to the temple. Like some, some, some his own whatever, his own standards, which may not be according to his own law, but at least at least was clear. Okay? So this is important. If a local authority considers a candidate initiation not qualified, then the candidate should be informed what needs to be done in order to become qualified according to his own law. Okay. Questions or comments? Please. I just want to ask whether these uh, regulations refer more to kind of a mechanical process wherein you can't have certain person's individual, you know, inner state of consciousness or spirituality, basically. So maybe in those cases, you know, somebody might follow mechanically, but it doesn't, you know, internally qualify or spiritually really qualify as an issue. Yeah, the, the point is, with that is that uh, it's, uh, that then it becomes totally, totally subjective. It becomes totally subjective. Because I can always say, Prabhu, I mean, I'm just, I, I choose Murari because he's, uh, you know, without any doubt qualified for taking third initiation even. But, but just say, Prabhu, you know, I, I know you're chanting 60 rounds uh, since uh, 25 years, but uh, I don't see your internal mood. Uh, I'm not joking, I'm not making fun of your point, but I'm just giving an example. I know you're chanting since 25 years and you gave 25 crores to the temple, but uh, I'm not sure, I don't see your internal mood ready for initiation. I'm not giving you the recommendation. And this is happening all the time. I have, I know, I have a friend in Bombay, I will not say, say which of the three temples, I have a friend in Mumbai, Huh? Four, four temples, sorry, uh, sorry, four each, but okay. I have a friend, and it's a, who we'll say, a senior person, even physically, I mean, he's not a kid, no? It's not a kid, it's not a, a youth, uh, you know, it's, like we say, third age, no? It's a, and he's part of the regular, he's part of a group, regular group. And uh, he wants to take initiation, and he tells me how he chants, he does everything, and somehow he's not getting recommended. And at least, I don't know, but when I say why, he said, I don't know. And uh, he say, but did you speak with the person who was supposed to recommend you? And he said, yes, I spoke. And what did he say? We said, well, I don't, he doesn't think I'm ready. Then. This is uh, two years ago. Then I met him in Mayapur a few months ago. And I asked, oh, so you took his No, why? Well, they still think I'm not ready. And this person somehow is still like kind of in a limbo. He wants to take initiation. Uh, for what? I can see he's a serious devotee. I mean, he's regular temple service, anything. And he's a, he's a very, what do you call, mature person. He's a mature person. He's a normal person. He doesn't look crazy. Um, besides the fact he wants my, to be my friend, but besides that, uh, it's very normal. But he's stuck, and I know of maybe m many people who are like this in the world. And again, the people just feel, they just think, 